So the steps are the same that we took in the 2D. We still have that same problem-solving procedure that we went through here. So what is given here that's going to be useful to us once we go into solving the problem? It may not be directly on the diagram. And what other piece of information might be useful to write here? Right, so in the diagram it's just W, but they tell us the value is W equals 1,000. In case we made our free body diagram and just label it as W, we want to remember we do know that numeric value. All right, and then what do we want to find in this problem? Right, so three forces... And then AD and AB are, are uh, rods. They can be in compression or tension. So I'm going to name it AD and AB. FAB, FAD. Again, by the convention that I like to use, this can only be in tension. It's a rope. These can be in tension or compression. It gives us, again, a quick check to make sure we're on the right track. Because if we come up with a negative tension, then something went wrong in what we were doing. So three forces we're interested in, remember we're in 3D here, we're going to be able to get three equilibrium equations out of each of our free body diagrams. So we need to make that diagram, that free body diagram. So here they gave us a coordinate system, uh, so I'm going to stick with that coordinate system for our solution. Right, so coordinate system, that's a required component of our free body diagram, done. We need our particle or our object of interest. So similar idea to what we saw in 2D, what would be a good particle that we want to isolate from all the connections to it? Yeah. That'd be point A. Right, so point A, again here in the particles it's often obvious, once we get to rigid bodies it's less obvious, but A, we get disconnected from the rods it's attached to and the rope it's attached to and just represent what's happening to point A. Right, so that's our object of interest. We're in 3D here, so right away I'm going to start writing the uh, coordinates of these points that we're going to be using. So A is located according to our global coordinate system here at 260 meters. So before I apply any, put any of the forces on here, I usually make a skeleton of what's happening in the problem, meaning I'm going to write down what at least I think are going to be the important um, points, the important coordinate points that I'm going to be using. So I have a rod that goes from A to D, so I'm going to put on the coordinate of D here, 0, 6, 0. I have a rod from A to B, so I'm also going to put in the coordinate of B, 2, 0, 0. And I have a rope from A to C, so I'm probably going to need point C represented here, 0, 0, 3. So now we're kind of set up. Now we want to put in our the forces that are acting on A. So what forces act on A? Right, so AB, which I called FAB. So I'm going to assume, again, all of my forces are in tension. So I'm going to know the directions of all these forces. There's a force I'm assuming pulling on A, directed towards B, that I'm going to call FAB. Right, what other forces act on A? Uh, AD, so same idea, directed from A towards D. I'm assuming tension. And I already gave it a name in my fine step, FAD. Okay, other forces? Right, the tension in the cable. So again, this I know, I'm going to know the directions of all these things. So from A towards C, and I already gave it a name, TAC. Then last force acting on this, yeah, weight. right, so we don't want to forget that weight force, W, so it's going in the negative Z direction, and we're told it has a value of 1,000 newtons. So here, if it's very clear what direction you're trying to indicate, here it's, cl I think, clearly negative Z direction, it's all right to just put the arrow and that value, but you might want to be a little bit more clear sometimes, so 
I can also put negative 1,000 K Newton, so I remember that it is in the negative K direction. But for this one where it's clearly down, either one is okay. When it's more ambiguous, make sure you're putting all of the components in as well. All right, so I have my coordinate system, I have my point of interest, all the forces are labeled, and I have all of the dimensions. Here, my dimensions are in the form of coordinates. Right, questions on any part of the free body diagram? Right. This is a 3D problem. I'm on the equation now. Like I said, equations, I like to knock out all of the unit vectors I'm probably going to need for the problem. So really any force that's acting, I'm probably going to need to know the unit vector or its direction. So I'm going to need to know u hat AB. So what is u hat AB going to be for this? What's the direction from A to B? Uh, halfway there. It's parallel to the y-axis. Yeah. Right, it's negative y, so what would u hat AB B then? Negative J. Right, negative J. Remember, it's a unit vector. It has a magnitude of 1. So we could do, we can always go the long way. We can also say that's RAB over magnitude RAB. But sometimes when it's obvious, which means it's parallel to a uh, coordinate direction, you don't have to go through this full process. But I'll go through some of the details here. So to go from A to B, it's end point minus start point. So 2 minus 2i is 0i. 0 minus 6j is negative 6j. 0 minus 0 is 0k. So the, this is going to be negative 6j. So the magnitude of this is 6. So I get back, again, that negative j. So when it's parallel to a direction, you don't need to go through this full step. You can, that's fine. But you can just put in what it's going to be because it's only going to be plus or minus i, plus or minus j, or plus or minus k in those steps. So if we look at u hat a d, what is u hat a d going to be just by inspection? Right, negative i. It's going in the negative x direction at parallel to x, so we can go right towards putting up negative i there. Yeah, you can always go through these steps. If you're unsure, go through the steps. But once you get familiar with it, if something's parallel, don't go through all that extra effort. Now with AC, we don't have that luxury. We do have to go through the full process of finding position vector AC and then normalizing it because it's not only an X or Y or Z. It's a combination of all of them. So RAC, remember, is endpoint minus the start point, so we're ending at C, starting at A. So it's going to be 0 minus 2i, 0 minus 6j, and 3 minus 0k, so plus 3k. If I its magnitude, 2 squared plus 6 squared plus 3 squared is 49, so the magnitude is going to be 7. So, whenever I can, I do like to represent it as a fraction, if possible, which it's not always possible. So, the unit vector, the direction to go from A to B, negative 2 sevenths I, minus 6 sevenths J, plus 3 sevenths K. Okay, I'll put up here, as a reminder, again, a, a vector is going to be its magnitude times its direction. So, for all of these vectors, we now know this, the direction of it. We don't know its magnitude. So, we'll keep that in mind in our next step. Questions on finding any of these unit vectors? Right, now, we go to the equilibrium equations. I like to use, again, scalar equations here. So, I reference back the unit vectors I made and my free body diagram to see what has components in the x, the y, or the z direction. So, what is my sum of forces in the x going to be? So what's one term that will be in this equation? Right, so FAD, uh, how much of it, or what, what will I write here with respect to FAD? There's a negative i component, 
So in the x, so I'm only picking out i components of these forces. I'm not explicitly writing this. I'll, I'll I will for this. Vector FAD is going to be FAD times its unit vector. So in this case, negative FAD i. So if I'm pulling out the i component, it doesn't have a j or a k. That's where this is coming from. Uh, all right. So what else has an x component? Right, so the tension in AC, so what will I write here? Right, so the I component of AC, so negative two-sevenths times TAC. Again, TAC as a vector is going to be TAC times negative two-sevenths I minus TAC times negative six-sevenths J, etc. So I'm just picking out What's the coefficient in front of i? So it's that unknown magnitude times that known direction. And then does anything else have an i component? Took care of that, took care of that. That has only j. I don't want to forget about the weight, but the weight does not have an i component. So this is my first equation. I have two unknowns in it. Uh, I have one equation, so numerically there's nothing I can do. So I'm going to just leave it be for the moment. Questions on deriving that first equation. In the y direction, what am I going to write on my right-hand side? Right, negative FAB. That negative comes from this negative J. What else goes in here? TAC. Uh, right, because right, it's unit vector AC. So the negative 6 sevenths, remember, we can write it out in the long form this way. Oops. So we pull this out, and then that's the J component, which goes in the Y equation here. Then anything else in equation number 2? That has only the I. We already took care of that. And again, that weight will not have a J component. We have two equations, three unknowns. So again, we'll just kind of let these be, and we'll write now the new thing, the third equation, we now have to worry about the z-direction also. So what is my right-hand side going to be for this? Yeah. Right, so here, that applied weight of negative 1,000, I don't want to forget about it, so I have to always refer back to my free body diagram here. So that's in the negative k direction, and then 3 sevenths, again, coming from this unit vector up here. All right, so I have three equations. I have three unique unknowns here, so it's a solvable system. And if I look at my find step, all three of those unknowns appear in these three equations. So I know that I will be able to find numerical values for these. Whether it's easy to do by hand or not is going to be very problem-dependent. Right, any questions up until this solve step? Right, so getting the equations from the free body diagrams and also import the unit vectors, any questions of how I got these three? Right, so now the numeric step. Sometimes it's easier than others. So what's the easiest way to go about solving these three equations? Yeah. Uh, to solve TAC, you can just uh, use the FZ just because you already have the thousand units. So you just said 3 sevenths TAC. Right, so equation three here the, uh, has only one unknown in it, TAC, so I can directly find TAC easily from that. So the tension in cable AC solving equation three, I get uh, 2,333 newtons. And again, that's in tension because it's positive. Yeah. Now, would you want us to use like 0.3 repeating for that? Uh, 0.3 repeating or no, this, e this is four sig figs, that's more yeah. than enough. Yeah, so 2333, 2330 would also be fine for this. Yeah, rule of thumb, in this class at least, three or four sig figs on your answer. Don't give me everything out of your calculator, and don't, 2000 is rounding too much for this one. So three or four is going to be a, is a good rule of thumb. While your intermediate steps, you might want to keep a little, some more sig figs, especially because in the homework, because of the, the rounding issue, I'm able to 
assess where you rounded off when I grade, the computer's going to have a tougher time. But if you report your final answer is three or four, you should be okay. All right, so this is intention. As a quick check, it has to be intention. So at least we know it's, we didn't get a compression answer that we would know we did something wrong. Once we have three, if we look at how this is arranged, one and two are going to be easy to find. So if we put a, our answer from three into one, that makes, we now have a number for this. FAD is now the only unknown. So we can solve for FAD using equation one now. We get a negative 667 newtons. That's in compression. And if we use our answer from equation three in equation two, again, this is now a number, so FAB will be our only unknown. So FAB, we're going to get negative 2,000 newtons, also in compression.